still asleep. Uh, well, awake. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm not one of those who are awake. Uh, my session is about custom objects, and this is basically, you know, I'm a, I'm a basically a person who likes to break things. <laughs> and uh, PowerShell is perfect for the job. Uh, let me introduce myself first. <laughs> uh, I'm Windows Engi Engineer at, Op at Op Optiva here in Amsterdam. Uh, I'm Microsoft MVP for four years now, I hope. Uh, PowerShell Magazine is the place where I actually try to spread the word about PowerShell these days. Uh, I decided that uh, having your own block is fine, but uh, using something that's, that's more uh, public and everybody is reading it makes more sense than actually publishing things on block that hardly anybody noticed. And also, a part of that, uh, I also uh, cooperate with RT Professional magazine in Poland and uh, write uh, PowerShell content for them as well in Polish. So, uh, the plan for today is I will try to explain a little bit of what, what ETS stands for. Uh, then we'll uh, drive into building custom objects and then we'll try to make them shine. And at the end, I will try to share some tips and tricks that I picked up during the years when I was actually writing some uh, scripts using the custom objects. So, uh, as you probably noticed, we are here at the PowerShell uh, summit uh, and I'm not PowerPoint MVP, so that's for, therefore this is the last slide you will see today from me. Oh, there was some at the end uh, as well, but uh, let's drive into demos. So, uh, PowerShell. Let me prepare something. Yeah, I like GUIs, but not so much in... Uh, come on. Yeah, okay. Uh, building custom objects. Uh, first, basically, uh, ever since uh, version 1 ship, there was a way to build custom objects. Uh, when I drive in uh, PowerShell uh, Vegan, I just joined uh, uh, this, uh, this really nice... Uh, I started to use this nice tool. It was already v2, so that's uh, the technique I basically picked up immediately. So basically, you just specify that your object is PS object and pass the hash table to it. And as you can see, it will uh, just create an object with two properties. Nope, no uh, rocket science there. But, uh, sorry. Uh, there's also way, because you probably noticed that uh, my object uh, has a real disadvantage, like it's... Uh, well, end of the world because the uh, I just ask it to have the foo the first property and the bar to be the second one and uh, to reverse it so yeah well, everything will, will just collide you know uh, the stocks will break and uh, people jumping on the windows but uh, there's still option to force it using odd member uh, some people still use it till this day this technique and I would strongly recommend stop it <laughs> because there are better ways to do it, and I will start show you in a minute how. Uh, so basically, then the retreat showed up, and uh, that was such a release because suddenly we could actually uh, specify the object, and the order was kept. So we are so relieved by that. And this is how basically you can create custom objects in version three and above. And also, this same technique, so passing the hash table to uh, to the uh, type. It's not only reserved for the base custom object, you can also use it for other types. So, for example, uh, let's connect to my domain controller because I don't have DC on the, my laptop. Uh, the, sorry, I have DC, but I don't have uh, domain uh, features installed on it. Obviously, it's just clients. So, if I pass the hash table to Etsy searcher and uh, I will uh, use for each to actually invoke. Uh, find all method on it. So we can see that immediately I got results back. Uh, and I didn't have to uh, work hard on it. I just specified the parameters, uh, sorry, the uh, properties of the, yep. Oh uh, yeah, sure, of course. This is ISC, so now I can just zoom in. Is it that okay? Big enough? Perfect. Uh, so, as you can see, I have a, a property filter, obviously, on Nazi search. I have search root, I have page size, and I can specify all those all those properties uh, by hashing passing hash table, and it works not only for the uh, for the uh, well, basically, it works for two two situations. First of all, when you have the types that have 
constructor that doesn't take any parameters at all. And Atsy Searcher is uh, one of those. Uh, so we can basically type new object Atsy Searcher and it will just work. Uh, second situation is where you have a value type. Uh, and uh, let's, for example, try to change the width of our console uh, or buffer. Uh, because I see don't have uh, the concept of the Windows uh, uh, size, but the buffer is like, uh, it, it's, it's there. So we can make it smaller. And now our object is kind of, ah, you don't see difference. So let's change it to something really small, 40. And now, as you can see, it's just probably got narrowed. Let's try to go back to the old size and try to display the same object again. And yeah, so now you probably see the difference. If you don't, let, give me a sec. Let me screw up. Yeah, so we can see now that uh, uh, the buffer size was actually changed just by the providing this uh, uh, hash table to the type. I didn't have to use new object at all. So this was uh, creating custom object. Uh, next thing you want to do is just, uh, okay, you create the custom object, but what next? It's just like a <laughs> sack of properties that doesn't do much, and you want to make it really distinct from others. So that your custom object is better than this other guy, our custom object, right? So you want to have it like you, it's really have the stamp on it and it's yours and you, everybody knows that it's your type, not somebody else's. Uh, obviously you can use add type and just generate classes on the fly, uh, but just to have the, some, some, uh, some um, uh, formatting around the object or have the special methods on the object and for that just to just just for that to have uh, You know add type in somewhere in your in your script. It doesn't really make sense in my opinion. So uh, Let's say first try to again use the v2 method In v2 if we wanted to specify the, uh, this custom type we would use uh, PS type names which is hidden property of each custom object uh, and insert our uh, type name. It's actually, I think it's a property on each object in PowerShell, including the uh, objects that are not custom, just uh, any type you pick will have it. And if we enter, insert it, now if we check uh, the get member, you can see that uh, the name of the type suddenly changed. It's not longer uh, the PS custom object, it's my types numbers. So now I can see that this is really my numbers, not somebody else's. Uh, in v3, we got, uh, again, uh, improved syntax. So uh, now we can use just add member to specify the name of the type. So I just added type name, some magic numbers, because we have P, we have E, we have uh, answer to ultim ultimate option to anything, world and whatever. I don't re remember exact quote from Douglas Adams, but yeah. Yeah. <sighs> no, no, we are still working on it, right? Because uh, we are here on this large computer that is actually working on the answer, uh, on the question, sorry. Uh, so as you can see, the my types magic numbers is there. So uh, we just managed to change the name of the type easily without this uh, uh, V2 uh, type syntax. But <coughs> there is even easier way, which is, I, as far as you know, even not documented way to actually specify the uh, types just by adding the uh, to hash table that you, uh, by which we already use it to define our, our custom object in a relatively uh, smart fashion without, uh, you know, with all the cap and all those things, we can add the uh, one key to this hash table, which is PS type name, specify the string and uh, RAM rolls, there you have it. So. Uh, I haven't found any documentation on it. I just happened to read some, uh, I think it was from blog posts or whatever, uh, that described this feature or bug, I don't know, wherever. It works, so we are happy, right? <laughs> yeah, so we are uh, already having uh, our custom type. And now what? Uh, the idea behind creating custom types is that once you have the type that is custom, so it's like you named it somehow, 
Now you want to show it to somebody else in a way that, that's uh, convenient for him. For example, if you look at get process, you see nice processes. If you, I think it is, uh, uh, if you do, do get, get that UMI object uh, and specify win32 underscore process, the result will not look as nice. So the question is, OK, I have this nice function. And now I want to make sure that everybody who is using this function in my module basically will get nice output that he can easily scan through and see some information back uh, from my command. Uh, there are two ways to get it. Uh, first of all is, again, add type. So you create some real juicy .NET, op .NET type and use it. Or you use uh, PS type names and just uh, make it fake object. And uh, in V2, uh, the only way to actually get this kind of uh, uh, display nice or uh, we could also potentially add some uh, um, methods to it or uh, script ma script properties so basically make it uh, more uh, uh, repeatable so even if we do something in a function and the result will the, the resulting object will also have something extra like methods or properties that we are not even uh, adding in our function. It's just uh, some metadata that will do it for us. That's basically where ETS stands, uh, comes in to play. Uh, so basically in V2, the only way to get it was to define PS1 XML files. And uh, can anybody who likes to write XML raise his hand? OK. I, I was kind of expecting those two hands in the back. Like, uh, yeah. But most people don't really love to write XML, especially when there is, uh, as far as I know, the schema is still not documented, right, Jeffrey? Schema of PS1 XML files for, for the formats and uh, types, is it documented somewhere? OK, excellent. So I, I haven't noticed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I should probably pay more attention. Uh, Anyway, uh, I create my function, and uh, important thing here, uh, if you are writing uh, functions and you're already targeting something that may use V3, always, always add this part here. Uh, I can't stress it enough how, how it helps later to use your function or any other command, because basically what it means now in V3 and above, uh, we have IST. Uh, sorry, uh, AST, so uh, abstract syntax tree that will be able to see this metadata that you just provided and will be able to understand output of your command. I'll show you in a minute how it helps use your function later, for example, when you, somebody else will use it to write a script. So uh, we specify this metadata, it's just metadata, you have to keep it in mind. It's just metadata so it doesn't change anything in the output, it's just uh, uh, discoverability for your command. So I specify something, I just connect to uh, some remote computer and get some WMI data. Uh, and in the end, because I want to target V2, I use this uh, PS type name insert method to actually add the custom type. My def function is defined. Uh, next thing I have to do is uh, define my XML. So at first I create some uh, create my uh, uh, file that I will use to keep it there. <coughs> As you can see, it's just temporary file. So, uh, well, I can throw it away later if I don't forget about it. And next thing I do, I just update format data. So now I will just update formatting of my object. Uh, before I do, let me see, let me just run the function so that you see the difference. So get computer info. And it gave me a list with some properties on my computer. Now, if I update format data and run the same command again, uh, it's, well, I will argue it's not better because of the size of the font and, and my, uh, uh, my uh, well, width of the, of the console itself. Sorry. I was uh, testing, obviously, on... Uh, smaller font and smaller size of the fonts <laughs> it worked better then but yeah uh, you can get everything so imagine that you have like a uh, hundred of computers now coming back each one in the list 
as opposed to having them in one nice table. Uh, obviously, if you are really you know, just want to look through it and just immediately notice some some something that doesn't really work very well, like uh, some uh, some computers that are not members of the main or uh, some users that shouldn't be there, you can immediately see that when the data is presented in the format table. When it's in list, then you have to scroll all the way up and then down and then up and then down and finally find this one the guy that doesn't really match. So uh, it's not so much as, uh, well, the objects are not changed, so we get the objects back uh, and we can pass it like, uh, well, we can use it with sort object, group object, wherever, but formatting is also there still. So, uh, another thing that we can do is just uh, add uh, uh, properties, script properties, uh, methods. You can see here, I'm actually adding few uh, methods like uh, shut down, restart to my computers. Obviously, I won't try it now on my demo laptop. That wouldn't be smart. But I can do get computer info and where is the life. And we'll see what happens. Come on. Okay. I probably should uh, also uh, set content and update format. <coughs> Sorry, update type data. So it's actually there. So now it's alive. And you probably noticed what I did uh, seconds ago. Uh, you remember when I added this uh, uh, metadata to my command? Because my uh, PowerShell, PowerShell now knows that the result of get computer info, even before I run it, will produce this uh, uh, custom type I just built, I can tap complete it and anything that is there. Just like that. I don't have to uh, drill into it. I just added the metadata to it, uh, one in the common itself. And the second piece of it, it was this PSA1 XML file that I just uh, loaded in the console, and now it works. And as you can see now, is alive. It's actually res responding when the computer is actually alive. So this was uh, for PS1 XML. Yeah, you can see this uh, get member uh, again is alive, and also I added uh, two string methods that uh, basically changes to uh, output. So I don't get the name of the type. Instead, of get the uh, name of the user on computer name, and in the brackets I get the uh, operating system caption, so uh, it's way nicer than it used to be when without this uh, change. But this is just a v2 level. Now we are at v3, and if you don't like to write uh, XML files, you don't longer have to to get some of those features in the box. Let's see how it goes. So uh, first of all, we have function. Uh, as you can see, it's X, so it's better. First of all, it's using the sim commandlets. It's using different way of creating pack, uh, creating the custom type. So you have you see this PS type name in it, and the order of the properties will be uh, kept. And also, yeah, I have to add output type, otherwise it won't recognize it if I run it or when I run it. So let me define this function. By the way, uh, I won't run it, so it's. Uh, uh, it's just defined. Oh yeah, maybe I just run it because we have to see. So again, you, uh, the result, again, our format of this list will try to make it uh, more like table. We'll try to add some uh, custom uh, properties, uh, sorry, uh, custom methods to it. Uh, Splotting, we need for that my variable. And first thing I define is the default displayed property set. This is uh, new in update dive data in V3. So now, instead of uh, working hard on the formatting table thingy, like defining whole XML file, you can specify the uh, default display property set, which limits the number of properties that are being displayed by default. You can obviously access other properties still using format list star or format table star, but default set will be this one. And because there are four properties, some of you probably know, or most of you probably know, that if you have four properties returned, you get a table. If you get five, ah, it's less, like you've seen in the screen before. 
So I just limited the number of default displayed properties to four. And by doing it, I should be able to actually see the table now. So we can see that uh, my DC is actually turning in a nice formatted table. You don't see this uh, special <laughs> treatment like, you know, limiting the width of the columns. That's not there. But at least I get, uh, again, this uh, report time of uh, uh, filling to it so that I can immediately browse and uh, see the most important data to me on uh, one screen rather than the list of the f whole properties that exist on my object. Um, next thing I do, because uh, I created this custom object, but I haven't uh, specified in any metadata that my object contains these properties like name, user, domain, model, OS, SP. I haven't specified it anywhere. So uh, uh, the only way to actually force PowerShell to actually see those properties <laughs> is to add this metadata using update type data uh, again. So for each of those, I just create my, uh, uh, I add it to my type. And now, if I do computer X, come on. So you can see, I see all those properties there. So uh, this is what you get if you uh, link few things together. First of all, always, always remember, output type is your friend. So always have it, even if you don't plan to use it, have it. And especially if you return the types that actually exist, like for example, you write some custom function that will return uh, process info objects. Uh, there shouldn't be anything that stops you from adding this information in output type because this uh, object will already have the type, so you don't have to work hard on it. But if you specify custom objects, I really recommend to use it as well. So the discoverability of your command increases dramatically. Um, yeah, so we have this one covered. Uh, I will also want to add this to string again. And again, I just have to use update type data. Uh, so again, I don't have to use PS1 XML file. So XML can uh, well be there. If you really want to, you still want, you, you still can use it. But uh, for those basic type scenarios like this one, uh, you can live without it and add all those information to your type uh, without uh, generating any kind of uh, uh, XML. So now you can see that I have all those properties, including my method. So I can just run it and get again the same results we got before. So this is uh, all nice and, and, and dandy, but uh, that's not it. There's more to it. Uh, part of the demo that I will present now is uh, probably covering the same uh, things that Tobias covered, but uh, I will go on with it. So uh, basically when you want to create objects, well, uh, with Tobias nice tool, you can still do it pretty easily. So example, I just defined a snippet that is just uh, has this uh, PS custom as a uh, shortcut, that's the name. And I can just tab it and now I get a PS type name already there so I can change it to something else and specify <coughs> properties. And yeah, this is nice and dandy and everything is ha everybody is happy and create and create <coughs> custom objects. But sometimes you just want to have the uh, more than one and you have you want, really want to make it uh, easy for anybody else reading your script or uh, looking at your code to, to, to tell what the object was uh, that you were actually using. So uh, now there's going to be some uh, eye candies. So I tr will try to create objects that will have four properties, message, font size, font family in delay and use them, use them uh, well, I will convert them to objects with convert CSV and you already saw how, how powerful this command is. And then I would pipe it to my command. So basically, uh, this is also uh, line in line with uh, Jeff's uh, presentation when he mentioned the has a and is a because uh, those objects will, will has a 
will have four properties that I care about in my function show text. So let's see what's going to happen. Uh, black and blue doesn't work very well. Yeah, so I basically created a function that takes pipeline input. Again, the size of the screen and whatever. Yeah, so as you can see, it follows the rules. So I have the delay of 10, so it takes a while to, to dis display this with data from the pipe and some effects will disappear quicker than that. That's one of the options, uh, CSV. Next one is XML. Uh, PowerShell has really uh, wonderful support for XML files. So if you want to have uh, objects based on XML, uh, there's really easy way to con convert the two between, between uh, objects and XML, especially uh, since V3, when we have this uh, uh, comma, uh, collection, comma, collection, comma, collection uh, uh, syntax possible because now you, as you can see, I night items is just a collection and I specify item and I get uh, all the items. So again, uh, this one will be shorter. Next one is JSON. It's also pretty easy to read. Uh, so no rocket science there. You just you can just scan through it and immediately see what, with what will happen. And that makes uh, creating custom objects relatively easy. The only problem is uh, all of those uh, techniques will result in the very the, those plain uh, objects without any uh, types. Last but not least, our our favorite, our favorite for today, our template parsing. And let's look at the structured text that I will use. So yeah, I, I just say, make it red, make it blue. Set the size, yeah. Make it dark green, and it's dark green. And because it's so easy, if you want to expand, I actually have those. Pshup. I just add it to my, oh, almost there. I just add it to my text file, run the code again. And now you'll get one text more. So uh, as you can see, uh, those techniques now, it's you know creating objects from the text, from the structured text is, well, just brain that simple. Uh, considering that we have so many tools and we can pass basically out of the box so many uh, formats, uh, including uh, XML, JSON, CSV, but also as uh, Tobias was presenting, uh, tab, tab separated and wherever you, well, you, you name it, uh, everything is possible as long as you have smart or the tool for the job. But uh, that's, again, those were plain objects without any type name. This PS type name, this is something that we don't need if we want to use uh, has a binding. But sometimes we may want to use is a binding. And in such a case, having an option to actually tell the uh, command accept only this uh, custom type would be really handy. And uh, this is again something I haven't found the documentation on, but it's possible to actually uh, limit uh, input objects. You can specify it as uh, has a uh, sorry is a binding, so it's uh, basically object. But you can add a uh, the, uh, attribute that will tell okay accept any object. But I, um, wait wait a second, <coughs> it has to be of certain uh, PS type name. So let me browse to this functions that I have. Uh, first function, uh, sorry for the names, I, I, I'm really crappy when it comes to uh, coming up with uh, uh, examples of something that's basically just for demo. So let's start there. Uh, I'll move to the something really production soon. So we have function that basically creates foo. Yeah. And the next function that sets foo. So uh, if I create my foo, 
I get uh, three properties, uh, name, foo, and date. So if I do the set foo, it actually updates the date, because that's what I told it to. And now test foo have updated date. No surprises there. But now let's say I want to re-break it. I'm trying to uh, pass some parameter, uh, some custom object, Using this, uh, assuming that I'm now having the CSV file and I really want to use set foo to actually set something with this. Uh, so if I try it, it will tell me, okay, wait a minute. Uh, you passed me the PS custom object, but this PS custom object is not really the type I want. It, the error message is crappy, sorry, uh, because it says that input object cannot be bind, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't tell you why. But uh, if you look at the code that I used for the set foo, here's, the, here's why. I specify that only, only type that I will accept is the foo, uh, which basically uh, helps a little bit to prevent others from piping something uh, out of the blue to my function, uh, but doesn't give them really nice uh, feedback, I would say. Uh, Obviously, uh, if we are smart enough, okay, I just checked that the type name should be foo. So yeah, <coughs> I will just add ps type name foo. And now my, my object will be of uh, custom object foo. So the function should work, right? Uh, not so much. Uh, it kind of worked, but the only problem is that, okay, exception setting date. Ah, I hate this feature, fire see. Uh, exception setting date, the property date cannot be found on this object. Yeah, obviously, if you look up, it's almost date, so not quite there. And uh, I promised some real life scenario. Uh, I have a module, I think it's on PS, uh, PS Gallery as well, Sim Inventory, and it allows you to basically use a compact SQL, so basically file based uh, SQL. SQL uh, to store data about your computers. <coughs> so if you do something like that, it will return some information using SIMS and uh, to about your computer. So the next thing you can do, actually, is just to uh, check that, okay, this one export, uh, uh, is actually taking object. You can trust me, this one is actually not taking any object. It just takes the one object that I produce. So if I run this command, it will actually work. So it will try, if I remove what if, it will update my table. But if I try to mimic it with something uh, just out of the blue and try to run the same, uh, again, we got the same error message. So now uh, no way to actually uh, override important information in your uh, repository, like I have this uh, SQL database with something that somebody just uh, made up on his uh, computer using uh, username, whatever name, he has to use the get sim data. Obviously, if we go back, yeah, I can always fool it to believe that this is actually valid object and break it again. But this is my conscious decision that I actually wanted to break it. And that's it. Any questions? Yes? That's actually a good question. Let's try. Can you repeat the question? Uh, okay. Uh, the question was, is it possible to specify more than one uh, type in a PS type name? So let's try Vari Ari here. Custom to name. And let's pipe it to get member and see what happens. So it kind of worked. But not so much, yeah. Ah, okay. That's also something that I haven't tried myself. So let's try. Function test foo. So PS. I don't think so, but let's try. <coughs> PS type name foo or bar 
Wouldn't you just have two parameter sets with two uh, pipeline uh, attributed values? That would work. That would probably work. But I guess the question was, is it possible to have it in one? Um, and oh yeah, I forgot that it should be parameter. Uh, and that's why I need the tools like uh, Tobias as one, because I travel typing. So anything that <coughs> saves me from typing myself, it's just so <coughs> huge win for me. Okay, so now, okay, let's try also process. Foo PS type mix. New foo. Test foo. Ooh. Okay, I need to specify some parameters here, I guess. Name. One date. Mm. I think it's failing to load PS type name. Yeah, I think so too. So I, I, I guess uh, we are kind of limited here, but uh, I think the idea with the separate uh, parameter sets kind of makes sense because if you want to sp uh, accept uh, different types, then probably you want to be able to, to take them separately. Um, so. I'll let you go. And the second one will be almost the same, but with bar. Okay, for some reason it didn't like it anyway. I guess it returns to the correct type, so it apparently it doesn't really work as we would expect it to. Oh, yeah. That's just wrong. Thank you. That worked. Okay, so uh, we can uh, work around it by specifying two parameter sets, each for each uh, pseudo type that we define ourselves. But uh, the that's probably going to work then on the other the other way you did before. Uh, you mean like uh, without the parameter set? Yeah. I can try it pretty easily. Actually, but then what would the help look like, or the syntax help? I mean, it would it be able to parse it properly, the help uh, generator? If you have, I mean, if you do it the other way, not this way. This way, at least you'll get the two parameter sets uh, broken out. Yep. Yeah, but uh, I guess, you know, if, if, if you do something like that, you don't want to have one parameter that has uh, both types, okay. types. Unless you want that, then it should, I, should, I guess it will be easier. <laughs> So let's try test foo now. Uh, it doesn't work. <coughs> Sorry. So apparently, uh, when I specify the different type, the other one, I hope it's not case sensitive. Shouldn't be. Uh, <coughs> so then it uh, just ignored the. Uh, Sorry, I have turbo called, and now I can hear it. <laughs> So, oh yeah, I know why why we didn't got any results <coughs> because I just said this one. And you guys are welcome to continue playing with this this evening too. It might be a little easier to make it for Bartek trying to invent code on the fly. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, but as you can see, it, it worked for this way. I can also try it uh, with the sorry. <coughs> With two parameters, uh, with bar param one parameter, but two parameter sets, probably would work as well. 
Okay, let me close this one. Uh, so yeah, now for the questions. Yeah, as you can see, I'm not really PowerPoint uh, uh, skilled. Uh, how to contact me? Uh, uh, two blogs that I try to keep up to date, especially the Polish one is the one that you can find me there. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, email, uh, Facebook, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever. Um, thank you. Push the button. Yeah. I push the button. Uh, so before you head it, uh, head downstairs.